What's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to write an opinion piece, also known as an opinion essay or an op-ed, step by step using excerpts of a real piece that I wrote. Let's get started. The purpose of an opinion piece is to describe your perspective or thoughts on a topic in order to make your reader really think. There are a couple of different types of opinions that you might see in an essay, and these include thoughts on a current tr event or trend, a stance on a particular issue such as voting rights, education, or food insecurity, a rebuttal of someone's argument, a humorous take on a topic, or a spotlight on an issue that the audience may not know about. For the example essay we are discussing today, the topic is issues for presidential candidates to consider when tackling climate change. An introduction to an opinion essay usually consists of two parts, a hook and a statement of opinion. The hook should consist of one or more paragraphs that introduce the topic in an engaging way, drawing the reader in and making them invested in your opinion. It should show that you have a unique perspective or experience that makes your opinion particularly interesting. And the hook should provide any background information the reader needs to know to understand the rest of the piece. There are a couple of different ways to approach the hook. You could, for example, start with a surprising fact, anecdote, imagery, or humor. You could pose a question that makes the reader curious or reference your personal expertise or experience. This is especially applicable if you are an expert in the field you're discussing in your essay. For example, if you are a competitive swimmer at school who's writing about the role of athletics in a well-rounded education, you could mention your own experience. If you're writing your piece in response to a recent event, you should describe that event to provide some more context in your hook as well. Next, you'll include your statement of opinion, which is a concise sentence or two that explains what your argument, stance, or perspective is. And this statement of opinion is pretty similar to a thesis statement, but it doesn't need to have a rigid structure. Here is an example of an introduction that I wrote for my opinion piece. Please pause this video now to read it over. And now we're going to start analyzing this introduction. In this paragraph, I hook the reader in by referring to a current event, the Democratic presidential primary debates in 2019. This provides necessary context since the reader now knows what time period I'm covering. Later on in the sentence, I include a simile that compares the podiums on the debate stage to a row of icebergs, creating a distinct image in the reader's mind that also provides a sneak peek of my topic. The next sentence, which explicitly mentions the topic of climate change, continues that image by indicating that the candidates drifted, like icebergs, through vague solutions. This intentional language allows me to criticize the candidates, suggesting that my subsequent statement of opinion, and my whole piece overall, is a critique of their approach. This underlined portion is my statement of opinion. This can be one or more sentences. My statement signals to the reader that I believe that the candidates should improve their solutions to address climate change by focusing on issues such as greenhouse gas emissions, campaign finance regulations, and the public's distrust of climate scientists. There are a couple of do's and don'ts you need to know before writing your body paragraphs. You definitely should make sure to expand upon your main point with smaller individual supporting points. And you should also carefully select evidence to bolster your claims or those individual points. And these pieces of evidence can include allusions and references to pop culture, such as movies, books, and music, expert opinions, which can take place in the form of quotes or just paraphrasing, anecdotes and images, analogies which are really useful especially if you're trying to break down a seemingly comple complex or complicated topic, statistics and facts, or details about your own research or experiences. You should also create a logical flow from one paragraph to the next and write concise paragraphs that each convey a single point. Showcase your unique voice 
and don't be afraid to experiment with the tone of your piece to really achieve that desired effect. Address counter arguments and include steps or actions for the readers or stakeholders to take. Do not write lengthy paragraphs that contain multiple points, include unnecessary jargon, or confine yourself to a five paragraph essay format. Here are two excerpts of body paragraphs. Please pause this video now to read them over. And now let's analyze them. In this first sentence, I am stating the subtopic that I'm about to discuss the Citizens United versus FEC Supreme Court case, which deals with campaign finance. In this highlighted portion, I am addressing a potential counter argument. My argument is that this court decision favors the fossil fuel lobby or people who are trying to influence politicians to make laws that favor the fossil fuel industry. And a potential rebuttal is that this court decision gives everyone the same opportunity to donate to political campaigns. But I contend that this decision still disproportionately benefits the fossil fuel lobby because these individuals have been accruing wealth for over a hundred years and beyond. This underlined section also describes the specific steps that I believe should be taken to even the playing field between those who have a stake in the fossil fuel industry and also eco-friendly startups or environmental advocates. These two phrases provide a smooth transition to the next paragraph because I start talking about the public's perception of climate change generally and to narrow my focus onto the topic of environmental warnings that are dismissed or ignored. This is one way to transition, to mention an idea broadly, and then get more specific. In this next paragraph, I support my claims using a relevant historical event, the publication of Silent Spring in 1962. Since this happened a while ago, I also made a pop culture reference to something more recent, the Netflix documentary Our Planet, to appeal to different generations in my audience. Here are some do's and don'ts for your conclusion. Make sure to include a final takeaway or food for thought so that the reader keeps thinking about the piece even after they've finished reading. Tell the reader and any stakeholders what they should do after reading the opinion piece. You want your piece to have some sort of impact. That's why you're writing, after all. On newspapers such as the New York Times, you'll know when an opinion piece has really struck a nerve if many readers have commented. The writer has galvanized the audience to share their own thoughts, which means that the piece really made them think and reflect. On the other hand, you don't want to summarize the whole piece or repeat your opinion statement word for word. So on the right, we have a sample conclusion. This isn't a full conclusion paragraph, but these are just a couple of sentences that you might see at the end of an opinion piece. And take a minute to read this over. In this first highlighted portion, you can see that I am explicitly stating what I believe needs to be done. So this is providing some sort of action item for society in general, and also those candidates I'm referring to in this whole piece. And this underlined section shows what I believe the outcome will be if we do heed those environmental warnings and start really honing our discussion and refining our discussion on climate change. Thanks so much for watching. In the comments, let me know what the topic of your opinion piece is. And also, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the bell to receive notifications whenever I make a new video as well. See you next time.